What's going on guys? Uh, you probably recognize that I'm wearing the same shirt from the upload that was on the same day that was the pros and cons video of the Claris and that's because I am. So congratulations. Uh, now we're going to do a quick overview. Uh, it's not really an overview, it's really a comparison actually between the Olight M1X Striker and the Claris X-T2CR Lite. Um, the Olight of course has been out for a little bit of time now um, in its form, the M1X Striker. And I think that the lights, although they do have certain things in common, I think that they have far more differences and uh, then they have similarities. And I think that at least for myself, these were, although this light just came out, it was light similar to the Claris and the Olight that I was doing most of my research on and looking for videos for because I just wanted to see, you know, again, just what was out there. And I think these are going to be two of the biggest ones going to be because the Claris is so new. And I think the M1X already has a really big following. Um, so diving right into it, this is just my opinion guys, so if you guys disagree with me for whatever reason, you are more than welcome to. In fact, leave those disagreements in the comments, perhaps I'm going to get some of this stuff wrong. Um, this is completely just subjective on my part. This is just how a light makes me feel, or how I feel about the light. Um, having said that, let's get into it. So user interfaces. Um, I, these lights have completely different user interfaces. Everything on the Olight that I use every single day, although it has this side switch feature, can be used just from the tail cap. From an EDC perspective only, I think that this Olight has one of, if not the best, EDC user interfaces of a flashlight. Um, any of y'all who have seen my videos before know that I am absolutely adamant about having a moonlight mode, always. It's probably the mode that I use most of the time um, with my EDC light. This M1X Striker does have that moonlight mode, so you can probably see that, I'm sure, in my hand. That's its lowest setting. Even if I were to point it at the camera in that mode, it might drown it out, I'm not sure, but you can easily look into that beam and not lose your vision. Um, the other thing I love about this, too, and I've mentioned this in another video, is that this, this user interface on the Olights in particular, and if, you, if you've ever owned an Olight, they've really kind of mastered their user interface. In fact, for somebody who uses an Olight regularly or has for the last year or more, it's probably more difficult for you to transition to another user interface than it is to transition from another user interface to the Olights because of how practical they are. They just make sense, honestly. Um, I love the fact that I can go from moonlight mode with momentary on or full click if I want pretty quickly into the highest mode, which is a thousand lumens on this light by double clicking momentary on the back tail cap. And then I can even go into my defensive strobe if I want by triple half pressing the tail cap mode. There are varying other modes on this light as well if I switch the tail cap, but honestly I use them so seldom that um, it's, it's not anything that made or break the light for me. Um, a few problems that I have with the interface, and it's not so much the interface as it is with the tail cap itself. The, the tail cap switch for whatever reason is very spongy. In fact, of all the lights I've ever owned, it's probably one of the most spongy tail caps I've ever had. And what I mean by spongy is that there's a lot of play in the cap before the light actually turns on. I like it, a light that has the retention all the way at the very tip. So from the second you push, you, you, you apply any bit of pressure onto the tail cap, the light comes on. Um, also, although this is a fast system, and when I say fast, I can go fastly from moonlight into turbo mode the way I just did. It's not the fastest. It's not an immediate system. And I always prefer an immediate system if I can get one. And we'll get in more into that later. Um, another thing about this light, and I've mentioned it before, is that it's got a cool knurling pattern, a checkering pattern all over its body, nearly from the head up. But it doesn't provide any kind of additional grip at all. In fact, this is one of the most slippery lights that I've ever used. And to me, that's a problem. Um, on the plus side of things, you can probably see here, it's got one of the longest um, clips that I've ever seen. In fact, it's a pretty fairly deep carry clip as well. Uh, compared to the X-T2CR, you can see it's almost double the length of the clip. Now, I will say that in my experience, I have zero problems, zero problems with the retention of the M1X Strikers clip. But the retention on the Claris is, although it's shorter, is definitely stronger than it is in my, at least in the two samples that I have, it's stronger than the M1X's is. Um, moving forward, we can also talk about the crenellated bezel. Obviously, that's probably one of the best-selling features for those that own this light. I know for me, it certainly was. I will tell you that uh, this is one of the most aggressive crenellated bezels you can, you can find anywhere on the market right now. 
Uh, so much so that in all seriousness, guys, if you guys like going out to the clubs and stuff on the weekend, um, this is something that they may not allow in to an area like that. So keep that in mind, especially into an airport or if you're going to the courthouse for whatever reason, you got a speeding ticket. I don't, I don't know. I've had a ton of those and had to go to the courthouse. They're probably not going to let this pass um, just because this, this is really a weapon style bezel on this light and it's fixed. So unlike the Claris, you can't take it off. Um, I'm not per se saying there's a problem because to the right user, this is awesome. To me, I have found, and I think I've demonstrated before, and if I haven't, I'm gonna demonstrate right now. Uh, hopefully the camera will be able to pick this up, but the crenellation is so aggressive on this light that it really digs into quite a bit of your spill on the beam, I'd say within 15 yards. So real quick, again, it may not pick it up. I apologize if it can. I'm just gonna put it straight into the high mode. And if the camera can look directly over the beam, you'll see that it looks like a star. I don't know, you may need to bring the camera closer, but it is not a perfectly circular beam at all. And you can see the rivets of every single one of the bezels. And it's pretty significant real estate for the beam. And that's only about six inches off the table. So you can imagine as it gets bigger, just how much more black you'll have in your spill. Um, just thought that was worth pointing out. So again, the for me, the Olight M1X Striker might just have the best user interface of any EDC light that I've ever owned. I would love to see improvements in the knurling and in the tail cap too. I'd like it just to be a bit firmer and less spongy. Um, the crenellated bezel, you know, it does its job. Perhaps a little less aggressiveness would work better on this light. But again, I'm really not ragging on that. I think it's great. It's got one of the best pocket clips on the market. I love the size. I think it's just right for a single 18650 cell. Overall, I think this light is a real winner. And for me, this is a jack of all trades. This is something that you could use tactically. This is very important too. I mean, you could certainly use this light tactically and you can also use this every single day, at least in my experience with the light and what I use it for. So to me, it's a win. For some reason, and for those guys who love flashlights out there, it, it doesn't, I don't gravitate towards it as it being one of my favorite lights, but I find that this light is on me every single day just because it's so good at what it does. And it's very good at everything that you'd want a light this size in this class to do. Um, now we'll go on to the XT2CR by Claris. You can see I've kept the lanyard on this light as well. Um, first things first, we've already talked about the differences in the, in the uh, pocket clips as well. The retention on this is fantastic. It doesn't carry as deep as the Olight, but it's still very, very good. I've never had an issue with it coming out of my pocket or anything like that. Um, I love, for those of you who may not own Claris products or for those of you who do, the dual tail cap switch system on this light is just awesome. Uh, I love having my immediate access to the high intensity strobe and to high mode as well. Uh, I've really, I mean, very fast for me to get used to it. Excuse me, this is my very first ever Claris light, and I'll tell you, it's it's really sold me. Um, very quickly, this has become my favorite 18650 style light, single 1860, 18650 style light. Um, in comparisons here, you've got center body knurling on this light as well, right where the brand name is and the XT2CR is. Uh, it's not it's not very aggressive. If anything, it's almost as slippery as the O lights is. But to be fair, it is a bit more aggressive than the than the O lights. But there's less of it, so I'd say they score about the same in terms of the knurling. Um, you've got a power indicator on this light, as well as a rechargeable port for USB. Uh, this particular light, as covered in the overview, comes with a 3600 milliamp battery. So the run times on this thing are pretty awesome, especially with the output that it has. Um, the crenellated bezel for me, guys, on this light is just miles better than the one on the M1X Striker. And the reason for that is because it's just so much shallower. You can just see the difference here. But at the same time, I can't explain it, guys. If you ever get your hands on both these lights, I almost feel like I'd do more damage with the shallower one on the Claris, especially when I put it into my hand and twist it, than I would with the much more aggressive looking uh, crenellated bezels on the M1X Striker. Also, it's just my opinion uh, that when you have longer crenellations, you just have more that could actually potentially break off in the event you ever have to use it in a defensive manner, God forbid. Um, unlike the M1X Striker, the crenellated bezel on the Claris can be twisted off. I don't know because this light's so new if Claris makes different filters and things like that that you can run on the end of this light, but you definitely can take the crenellated bezel off which is another cool thing because again, if you're the type of guy who's going out to the clubs or going to the airport or something, you wanna have a light on you, I mean, you can really move the defensive element of this light by taking the crenellated bezel off. So for me, that's that's a big pro 
um, again, at least for me. Now, as much as I love this light, and in the same way that I told you guys that the Olight and one Striker is something that I don't gravitate towards, I don't know if I've ever gravitated more, if I've ever want, just wanted to carry a light more than this Claris. But I don't on most occasions EDC. The reason for that, again, it doesn't have a moonlight mode, so the dimmest it gets is 10 lumens. Um, if I change the user interface, if I change the mode settings to the outdoor mode settings instead of the tactical one, then, you know, I have immediate access to the 10 lumens, but it completely disables my defensive strobe, which is kind of what makes this light the tactical royalty level that it is in the tactical era. In my opinion, I, I still think um, with anything that I've seen by far, this is the most tactical light of 2017, maybe even of all time. Um, for a single 18650 cell light. And I know that's a big statement. I usually don't make statements like that, but this thing has just sold me on every aspect. Uh, but for me, this is more of a dedicated war light. This is more of a dedicated, uh, again, I used this light during Hurricane Irma. This is a storm light. When we thought someone had broken into the car and I had to run down the street, you know, and we thought we found the person that had tried to attempt to break into the car. This was that light. I've never been more confident in a situation like that, a potentially dangerous situation, than having the amount of light, the way that it puts the light out. Very soon, Nightcore is going to release one of their new lights. It's a very similar factor. It will have 1,800 lumens, which is 200 more lumens than what this one's rated at. But I'm very interested to get my hands on that one because I would be very surprised if the beam pattern on that Nightcore, even with more lumens, comes anywhere close to the beam pattern in the Claris. This is not the brightest light that I've ever had. It just has the best beam I've ever seen. Really, the beam itself sold me. Um, so for me, for what it's for, this is by all means king of the tactical realm, whereas the M1X is a jack of all trades. It does everything well. This light for me does not, uh, does not serve the EDC purpose well. Uh, this light does, fantastically. You could certainly use this light in a tactical application as well. If I found myself in a life-threatening situation between the two, although you could use both, I would much rather have the Claris on me. So that is just a quick run-through, uh, quick comparison really of both lights. Very similar in the fact they run on the same cells, they're similar sizes, but just like firearms guys, lights are used for very specific applications. And um, these are the types of applications that I found both these lights to be best at for myself. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, stay safe and God bless.